Ever since they had that Disney investor call, there hasn't been anything coming up on the Star Wars docket that I've been more excited about than the Acolyte. The whole idea of, of looking at, you know, a Star Wars story from that point of view, as maybe Obi-Wan would say. I've been super stoked for it. Then they announced that Leslie Headland, the showrunner of Russian Dolls, was going to be the one running it, which was like, fabulous. This, that She's incredible. This is going to be really good. And I've been excited. Then that poster dropped poster of a lightsaber with a being dragged across the ground with a blood s smear going falling behind him like okay this this is looking like what i want to see and, and, and then the trailer dropped and i don't think the trailer. let's be clear I, I mentioned this several times yesterday and some people didn't get the message i'm not saying i hated the trailer i'm not even saying i straight up disliked the trailer i'm simply saying the trailer did nothing to move the needle for me Instead of looking like awesome and cinematic in scope, like say Shogun does or House of the Dragon or something like that, it kind of looked like, yeah, a Disney Plus TV show. That's kind of what it looked like. Again, just a first trailer. I've been not impressed by first trailers and fall in love with other things later. So I'm not going to read too much into it. What does concern me though is the continuation of a horrible Disney plus pattern that they just do not seem to learn from. You see other streaming platforms when they have their premium series, Shogun, Last of Us, House of the Dragon, I go on and on and on and on. Those series, when you come to an episode, you're in, for a good 45, 55, 65, 70 minute long episodes. Because they've got story to tell. They've got story to tell, dimensions to fill out, depth to dig, and all that kind of stuff. And they know if you're going to make, have appointment television, things that you set your weekly clock by that I count down to Wednesday nights or Friday nights or Sunday nights, that kind of happens when you're going to get more than a 25-minute, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And then off you go with the shake weight, giving you a refreshing spray. Like, that. that's not what we're looking for when we're making appointment television. And it's difficult for, like, especially for dramatic stuff, to be really good and satisfying when it's that short. If you can do it, awesome. But it's difficult to because it feels like just when the show gets going – the credits roll. Like as you just feel like you're getting into an episode, boom, the credits roll. Again, not saying it can't be great at 35 minutes, but it's more difficult to be great at 35 minutes. And again, historically, there have been examples when it does work. It's just more difficult. Well, not long after I said, okay, the trailer didn't thrill me, but I'm really ex expecting, I, what I want to find out is how long the episode's going to be. I swear to God, of like five minutes after I asked my wife that question. I'm wondering how long the episodes are going to be. An article dropped with an interview with Leslie Headland who talked about the length of the episodes. And it's again, worrying to me. This comes to us from movie web. Who's quoting the showrunner, Leslie Headland when asked about how long are the episodes going to be in this eight episode series about 30 minutes. Yeah. I would say some of them are a little bit longer. Like the finale, I think is 40 minutes. I think, but, the, but there are also some, that I think are barely 30 minutes. On average, I would say somewhere between 30 and 35 minutes. What the hell are we doing? What the hell are we doing? Why aren't they a movie? If you're gonna make a 30 minutes with the credits that are seven minutes long. I mean, this was the exact same thing that came up when Obi-Wan happened, right? Now remember, there was a couple people did it and I, I feel bad that I can't remember the name of the person that did it, but somebody took the Obi-Wan series, edited it, cut it down a bit and put it together as a movie. And I'm not going to say it was one of the best Star Wars movies ever, but it was a really good, enjoyable one shot movie, the way they edited it. And I, again, I'm just, I'm sitting here. Every other streamer seems to understand this, right? <laughs> you don't turn on an episode of the crown and it's 28 minutes before credits with four minutes of credits. Yeah. But like, but you don't turn on Shogun and it's 30 minutes before credits. They understand that if you're going to build tension and drama for every time you sit down and start an episode, it needs to be fleshed out a little bit more. And 
Disney Plus has seen that this doesn't work. It doesn't work. You can make an exception. I would say an exception for Disney Plus would probably be um, Percy Jackson, which I thought was great. Yeah. I, I thought Percy Jackson, now it wasn't 30 minute episodes. It was a little bit longer than that, but still, I thought Percy Jackson was great. There was an example of work, but there have been more examples of it not working than of it working. And I, I just, if you don't have a story that's full enough to necessitate a television series, like Rob, you were just saying, if you don't have that story, but you have enough story to make a movie, then make a movie. Even if you just want to make it for Disney Plus, make a movie. I, it's, it's just, again, as a viewer, and this, I'm only speaking for myself and my own viewing habits, okay? I'm not speaking for anybody else. But for me, it's difficult to make any show calendar-marked television appointment-watching TV when I know that by the time I get cozy in my couch and reach back to get my Zevia Cola, there's five minutes left in the episode. It's, it's just difficult for me to get in that. And I don't know why Disney has not learned their lesson at this point. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of today's video, Better Help. Guys, it's a brand new year and a lot of people are making New Year's resolutions. You know, things they want to change about themselves. But I've always believed that it's also equally as important to identify the things we're doing well and building on those. And therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. I've always believed that nothing impacts our daily performance in our jobs, our hobbies, our relationships, like our mental health. And I've also said for a long time that it's about time that we stop just putting emphasis on improving our physical health by getting out to the gym, but also by putting emphasis on improving our mental health as well. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you gotta do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So guys, celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash campia today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Campia. Anyway, Rob, uh, you heard about this. Big deal, no deal. Um, I mean, ultimately, it comes down to how good are the episodes. I mean, I mean, that's ultimately is what it comes down to. I just think they give themselves a much more difficult task in making the episodes good by having them this short. I don't know. How do you feel about this? Well, look, I, I feel that, you know, your show, what your show is should dictate I've never understood how they make these Disney Star Wars shows, really, because they don't seem like they're designed as full episodes of television. Because television, there's a model to write TV. You know, a 40, like Star Trek The Next Generation was a teaser and five acts. You know, so you, you had a structure that you knew was going to leave you with a 45-minute show at the end of the day. Every episode, you add commercials to it, it fills out an hour-long chunk of change. The original Star Trek was 52 minutes because there's less commercials. But you'd think that they would design these shows and write them to a formula. It seems to me a lot of the time these shows are kind of written willy-nilly. They're almost like written as a movie and then they break them up later. So I always feel like with these Disney Star Wars shows, with the exception of Andor, which felt like they were writing full episodes, that we're seeing something that's half-baked. And I feel like in the case with Obi-Wan and the case with our editor, like you talked about, that put that show together, he more successfully conveyed what that show was about 100%. than the episodes 100%. themselves did. Yes. And when you're seeing that, I wonder, because I wonder from the analytics standpoint, I know they want to get people, people coming back again and again, week after week after week, so they can show those analytics. But I wonder if they wouldn't get more views overall if they made a great if I could watch a two and a half hour movie, I'd much rather watch a two and a half hour movie than six shows that are 30 minutes long. I'd much rather do that. And because it would be much more satisfying to me and watching a show, it's it, those Disney shows that are that short are supremely unsatisfying. You get to the end of the episode and you're like, wait, I was just, it felt like they take you. It's like being on a roller coaster where you never get to go down the hill until the climax. And then even then it's not that big of a hill. I mean, you think they'd learn, to your point, look at the, the viewership stats on Ahsoka, right? Like after a couple of episodes, week after week, the viewership dropped towards less than half. By the time they got to the finale, it was less than half of the viewers that turned in for the original. It's like, this is not how you make... People will often say they only care about money, right? 
To which my response to that has always been, good. I hope, th- I hope that all they care about is money because if you truly care about money and you're smart, then you know the better you make something, the more money you stand to make. Yeah, you could probably make a quick buck with something garbage, but you stand to make an MCU fortune if you actually put love, affection, time, and care into making something the right way. Them just churning out the, the, these ideas of these the quick little shows and it's like, who cares? You know, our, our audience are sheep, so they're just going to eat up whatever corn feed yeah. we throw on the ground. Uh, if they think longer term, look, Transformers made a bunch of money for the first couple of films and then their box office dived and, and now they can't even... Re- they're, even when you put out half like great movies like Bumblebee and half decent movies like Beast Wars... They can't make any money because they already drove the IP into the ground. If they had made those Transformers movies consistently good, they would still be making Transformers movies at the billion-dollar mark today, like the MCU did for like 12 years. Yeah. And I just wish they would learn this lesson. It's like, you're right, Rob, because it feels like they just kind of throw these things together. Well, you know, John, television itself as a medium also has an expectation when you watch an individual episode, even if it's a serialized story, that the individual episode itself has a satisfying beginning, middle, and an end. That's the model of television. And the problem with these really short episodes is you understand, you feel when you're watching them, you're getting half a story. You're never getting a fulfilling story. A TV show episode. It's never fulfilling. It's always like, oh, it's over now. It feels like, okay, and when you you do get to a reasonable ending, it feels like it was so short that you never got to really dig in and enjoy it. You are so on the money because you watch an episode of Shogun. Every episode has a beginning, middle, and end. And while the while the the story of Shogun isn't complete, there's 100%. always mini stories in these things that take you on this journey. This last week's episode is a terrific example of that, right? And you just can't I'm not saying you can't do that with 30 to 35 minute episodes. I just haven't seen Disney Plus do it yet. No, and 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 it's 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 I think they don't understand it's harming their their audience because the audience is being unfulfilled twice. You're you're getting unfulfilling TV episodes and then when you when you see somebody cut it together that isn't part of the team and they make the episodes into a movie that's better than what you watched on TV, that's problematic. Anyway, guys, Question is for you. What do you think about this? The showrunner for the upcoming Star Wars The Acolyte has kind of confirmed that some are barely 30 minutes and maybe the finale gets up to 40? She thinks? I, I Look, who knows? Maybe this will turn out to be the best Star Wars. Maybe this will be Andor level. Maybe it will. We haven't seen the episodes yet. We can't say it won't be, but I'm just saying, commenting on what we've seen so far, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed to see what we're seeing. Maybe it'll turn out awesome. Maybe it won't. Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.